Welcome to Migratory Beekeeping, Why Keeping Them Alive is So Hard. This program was originally presented for the Miles to Grow program sponsored by Bee Culture Magazine in October of 2013. Your bees are experiencing so much in their migration. Traveling on trucks with hundreds of thousands of other bees, hopefully staying on the truck, avoiding any snowstorms, and getting safely to their destination. Meeting other bees opens them up to viruses and mites. And crop pollination opens them up to insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides. Like the Olympics, where thousands of athletes and millions of fans converge into one area for a few weeks, 15 billion honeybees all converge into one area in California. These mass convergences are ripe for the spread of disease, viruses, pests, and an overall increase in stress. One and a half million colonies of honeybees arrive in California from across the U.S., each with their own health status. Viruses, mites, weakened immune systems from eating food stored over the winter that is filled with pesticide residues, having been trapped in their hives during the drive with a desperate need to relieve themselves to a different latitude and longitude to a vast area of one thing to eat. We hope, if the bloom has not been delayed. Honeybees fly from their hives and after that initial relieving flight they get the lay of the land and everywhere is almonds. North, south, east, west, almonds. For a few days, okay, but one source of food for three to four weeks. As it is spring in California, a few weeds may dare to try to grow, but that may not last if herbicides are sprayed on the weeds or native flowers. As bees travel to other crops through their migration, Honeybees have their preferences, nectar here, pollen there, not necessarily both from all crops. Yet pollen provides much needed protein for honeybees. Back to almonds and the start of your crop pollination season with your bees. As California has wonderful pesticide use reporting, data is available on pesticides used on the various crops. This information is available at the PAN website from their pesticide database. They list the top 50 pesticides used on crops in California. These may or may not be used in other states on these same crops. This information is used as an example since California makes this information available. The pesticides listed in red are toxic to bees. These other pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, and adjuvants, have other toxic issues as well, as you can read. In apples, plums, and cherries, you will find three to five pesticides used that are toxic to bees. While the label is the law, many beekeepers will tell you they have observed applications of these products during the day when bees are actively foraging, when the crop is in bloom, and when nearby native plants are in bloom if you are lucky enough to have native plants blooming within forage range of most of the monocrop regions. Two to four toxic chemicals are used among alfalfa and sunflower. In this list, you will see it does not take into account any treated seeds or pesticide coated seeds. At this point, if you started your migration in almonds, then went to apples, 
plums, cherries, alfalfa, and sunflower, your honeybees would have possibly encountered 21 toxic pesticides. Then add 11 more to that list here in blueberries and cranberries. How are your bees doing now? Have they built up for the season? Is your queen still laying eggs? Do you have a pile of dead bees in front of your hive every few days? How are your mite counts? How do your bees look? Healthy? So there are more crops to pollinate, so you truck your bees into watermelon, cantaloupes, cucumbers, and pumpkins for a possible dose of 12 more toxic pesticides to bees. Now I'm just pointing out the toxic chemicals. What about the chemicals that are relatively non-toxic? Relatively. While one exposure may be relatively non-toxic, what do you think happens to the toxicity level when your bees experience that chemical four, five, and six times? Ah, the citrus groves. Some of you may start your migration in citrus and work your way to the Midwest or up the East Coast, but your bees are still experiencing a broad mix of pesticide exposure along with exposure to mites, viruses, weather, and lack of quality forage. There is information available to you about which pesticides are toxic to honeybees. Check your local sources for local information, as well as the states in which your bees are pollinating. Do not rely on the label to protect you and your bees. The law. There are many weaknesses with the label. First, it has to be read. Secondly, the directions are to be followed. Third, the language appears to be confusing for many, including the state lead agencies. That said, a new label for neonicotinoids was recently presented. It suggests moving honeybees out of harm's way. But to where? Where is it safe for the bees to go? And while a managed colony may be able to be moved, the native pollinators are sacrificed. There are conditional exceptions allowing for legal misuse of the neonic pesticide. This new label again is only for the neonic pesticides at this time, for foliar applications, not for pesticide coated seeds. This is the accompanying document explaining the new label for Neonix only. While the label is the law, it has to be read. If the directions are not followed and the product is used in violation of the label, those who experience the results of the misuse have to report it. The uninformed farm laborer, the neighbor whose fish dies in their pond, the beekeeper whose bees are damaged or killed. While the list of chemicals shows the toxicity of that sole chemical, it again does not reflect real-world field experience. To save money and time, far too often fungicides and insecticides are mixed together, creating a whole new chemical that has no label guideline and no research. Unlike our own medicine cabinet, where there are warnings on our drugs telling us not to mix it with other drugs or foods, as well as the time of day to take the medication. When agricultural chemicals are mixed, well, your bees will tell you if it was okay. Thing is, unless you see the product containers in the field, you may not know what was mixed without a lab analysis of your dead bees. Again, while many of the chemicals your bees will experience are relatively non-toxic, the buildup of those pesticides in the nectar and pollen creates a pre-lethal effect in the colony. 
Your bees will not suffer and die immediately, but may die two crops from now. Your bees could get hit with something in apples, but they do not die until they get to the watermelons. Lack of quality forage, lack of a diverse diet for your bees also weakens their immune system. Viruses increase their effects upon the hive, mites increase their impact, then it all starts to snowball, and there is no ICU for honeybees. But could you save them anyway at that point? While you hope to make honey as part of crop pollination, you may need to simply go find some native ground with diverse nectar and pollen sources. Maybe this will be the ICU for your ailing hives. A safe place is hard to find. The wind could very well blow a pesticide, sprayed to control grasshoppers or mosquitoes or some other pest to cross the native ground or hit your hives directly. Sometimes, like with the abandoned marsh, the water was restored to an area, but they forgot to replenish the fish and frogs and toads. Instead, the mosquitoes filled the area and no living thing could stand to be outside. So they sprayed dibrome. So much for that marshland coming back. So your bees are struggling to keep up their health in order to fight off mites and viruses, and so they have collected some great protein, wonderful, diverse pollen, and it contains 35 or more pesticides and is loaded with fungicides. Even pollen from wildflowers has pesticides in it. Jeffrey Pettis found that honeybees exposed to pesticides had a greater susceptibility to Nosema serrani. I haven't mentioned the one factor that truly is out of your control, weather. Weather can affect your migration travels. It can affect what there is for your bees to eat. Late bloom, sudden snowstorm in the spring. Each area of the country is different, different even within each county. So as you travel with your bees from warm and dry through storms, from pleasant to snow showers, we are asking more than can be expected of any living creature. So with all of that, you will experience colony losses. Two and a half percent to 11 percent of your colonies will die every month on the crop pollination circuit. They may be all at once. They may be gradual over a few weeks. Either way, you may not be believed, like with corn planting. Pesticides do not always affect your bees directly, nor do you catch the misuse of pesticides as it is happening. Like the beekeeper in Utah who caught the applicator in the middle of the day, in the middle of the field, spraying, and the applicator stated, I figured the bees would just die in the field. As pesticides that weaken your bees' immune systems and make them more susceptible to disease, come from many directions, but you may only be scolded saying your mite load is too high, when no one else ever adds, because your bees' immune systems were so weakened by pesticide exposure, poor forage, and the viruses spread by that darned mite, decimated your bees.
Sometimes, however, like the beekeeper in Utah who caught the applicator in the act, sometimes there is some justice.